and I am the Civil War Guru. Today we're down here at the Battle of the Western Theater Museum in this North Park town of Texas. And we're set up in front of the famous Vicksburg display. And there's an array of artifacts in here. What we have in front of us is a magnificent regimental drum of the 76 Ohio Infantry Volunteers. This is spectacular. These guys were, were the Western Theater, should I say. Uh, they were formed there. Uh, they organized at Camp Sherman in Newark, Ohio on October 5th, 1861. They were commanded by Colonel Charles Woods. And when I tell you the battles they participated on, get you a cup of coffee, sit back in your chair, because it's a long list. So let's start with Fort Don Donaldson, Shiloh, Corinth, Milkins Bend, Louisiana, Chickasaw Bayou, Mississippi, and they were at Arkansas Post, Arkansas, Vicksburg, Canton, Jackson, Mississippi, Lookout Mountain, Tennessee, Missionary Ridge, Tennessee, Ringo, Georgia, Resica, Georgia, Dallas, Georgia, Kennesaw Mountain, Georgia, the Atlanta Campaign, Jonesboro, Georgia, Lovejoy Station, Georgia, Ship's Gap, Georgia, Gladson, Georgia, Columbia, South Carolina, and Bentonville. And then at the end of the war, they marched in the Grand Review in Washington, D.C. This was the quintessential Union version of the Western Theater. Spectacular. This, these things are so highly collectible, these regimental drums. And this one, what's so unique about it, and I don't know if, if we got our famous cameraman here, Kenny Rogers, I'm just gonna start calling KR. Inside, the, there's a little air hole on all regimental drums. And you can look in the air hole. Normally, you'll, they'll, uh, you can view either whoever made it. Normally, they'll put the maker's label in it. And you look inside this one, and it has all these battles handwritten on a document and decoupaged on the inside of this drum. And I'm not going to make any guarantees, but we're going to try to get this little magical camera, an old KR, see if he can perform a little magic, as I'd love to get that to where you can take a look at it. But again, this is one of the fabulous displays down here at the museum. And we're going to get up and get busy. Kenny, get your magic wand out and let's see what we can do. Uh, th this is probably the coolest shot we've done since we've been doing these videos. Kenny's got the camera set up and we're looking to a little peephole and I call it an air hole on a drum. And you, he's got part of that tag, which is so cool. Uh, and, it, and it's across from the, the air hole. And, and it's got all the battles that I read listed on it. And, of course, you can see the last one. Uh, and you can see it's all in script, all period. You can see Bentonville and you can see Columbia. And above it is just that long list of, of battle honors that the 76 Ohio Inter Infantry fought in. This, uh, again, outstanding drum, all the original. Uh, it's got the original rope on it, most of the original tugs on it. It's got the original over-the-shoulder sling on it. This spectacular, original paint. This, I can't say enough good things about it. Big Federal Eagle on the front. This one of those uh, items that you really cherish when you're a Civil War collector. All right, we're going to move to the next item. Thank you, Kenny Rogers, for performing your magic. All right, we're standing here in front of one of the three displays we have here in the, in the museum, Battle of the Western Theater. Musical display. Music was a, a very important part of the Civil War. Of course, around the camps and marching. And, and I, I heard crazy numbers, like over a half a million songs were written during the Civil War. And we have Civil War sheet music in there, drums, and. And in this particular case, is a, a large group of drums in the back, and, it, and those belong to the, to the 83rd Indiana 
uh, and that's at the reunion. There's a picture of them sitting there with their drums. But this thing's full of cool uh, musical related equipment. And what we're going to go in here for is we have the bugler of the 4th Kentucky Bound and Infantry. We have his uh, tin type, his Prescott uh, revolver, which is ID to his name down the back strap, and his regulation bugle. Now we're going to get old KR, our cameraman up there, to perform his magic, and let's get this thing on tape. All right, Kenny's got a good shot here of the, the group in itself. And again, this is Private William J. Crosby, C-R-O-S-B-Y, Bugler. When I ran him in through the, the National Archives, he's, he is listed as Bugler of Company H, 4th Regiment, Kentucky Mounted Infantry. This boy was a young man when he joined. He joined at the age of 18 at Camp Nelson, Kentucky. They hooked him up with the Army of the Cumberland, and he was with General McCook on his raid in Atlanta. Then back to Kentucky at West Point Rail Station. Then he fought at Camp Lovejoy Station. Then here's where they went and mounted again in pursuit of our favorite friend, General Nathaniel Bedford Forrest of Tennessee. They chased him from Pulaski, Tennessee to Muscle Shoals, Alabama. Never caught him. He participated in the Battle of uh, Franklin and Nashville. That's the last major battle of the Civil War. Then he joined in on Wilson's Raid in Macon, Georgia. Mr. Crosby survived the world war and lived to the age of 74, and he died in Cherokee County, Texas. Now we're going to get Kenny to get up here and get the back strap on his Prescott revolver that has his name on it. Close up of his uh, uh, tintype and uh, maybe a little bit better shot of the, the bugle if we can. All right, Kenny, we're going to move the camera around. All right, there's a wonderful shot of William Crosby, his tintype, in its original case. What a wonderful photo. All right, now we're going to try to get the, the Prescott revolver and get his name down the back strip. All right, that's an outstanding shot of the presentation on the back of this Prescott revolver. These, these revolvers are really unique. It's a, it's a total brass frame and with the, the iron works, the, the, the cylinder and the barrel, etc. Just a real cool revolver. Not many of them were made. And that uh, idea on the back is just absolutely spectacular. And again, uh, you know, what you're seeing here on video uh, is really outstanding because when you come in and visit it, you, you don't get to sneak in the case and get a good look at these IDs like you can on this video. So this is, you know, a little extra treat for you, and, and hopefully we'll get you to come down and visit with us. Love to give you a tour of the museum and the complexes that we have here. All right, the next thing we're going to move to and try to get a shot of it is a, a wonderful uh, bugle with a pigtail on it, which is uh, fantastic. All right, Kenny, well, let's move the camera around. All right, Kenny's got a, a real good shot of, of this bugle. And if you look at the, where the mouthpiece is, you see a little complete loop there. It's called a pigtail. And that's to, to stop any saliva from going down into the, the bugle itself. And these things are all dovetailed together. These, these are put over a mandrel and, and dovetailed together. And, and that's pretty indicative of the Civil War style uh, bugles. And another thing, that they're really lightweight. These things are, are real super lightweight. And after the war, they, they stamped them and pressed them. And they're made of a heavier gauge. But most of the 1840s through the Civil War, they're, they're real featherweight and they're, you know, easy to handle. But we wanted to just give you a little splash of the, the musical uh, display that we have. And uh, it's just, you know, one of them things that music was so important, especially to the younger troops. You know, it, it kept the, you know, love of country and God 
playing in the in the airways at night. You know, everybody singing and and forgetting what they had to do the next day. All right, Kenny, let's move to the next item. All right, here we are with the next item, and this item is a 1850 staff and field sword, silver handled. And this has got embellishment on the blade on both sides. This is an imported blade. And uh, the, the U.S. manufacturers couldn't keep up with the demand for swords, so they imported them from Europe and England. So this is an imported blade with all the U.S. motifs on it. It has a Federal Eagle on one side and the U.S. on the other. This has the brass mounts and the steel body scabbard. And on this brass mount, the top brass mount has all the battle honors of this gentleman here. All right, let's talk about who he is. This is Lieutenant Colonel Samuel Yeoman. That's Y-E-O-M-A-N. And Mr. Yeoman was born in 1829 in Ohio. And he was immediately elected as commander of the 90th Ohio Infantry that was formed at Camp Circleville, Ohio, on July 16th. Of 1862. Their first mission was pursuit in pursuit of General Confederate General Braxton Bragg and uh, after the Battle of Perival he fought him at uh, Stones River. They fought at Chickamauga. They fought at the Battle of Atlanta. They fought at the Battle of Nashville and Mr. Yuma was mustered out on June 16th of 1865. He died in 1890 and he's buried at Washington Courthouse, Ohio Cemetery. And this sword was presented from his men for his gallantry. And this was presented after the Battle of Stones River, Tennessee. Now this guy carried this sword. Stones River was an early battle and he carried this sword. This was the pride of his, his, his equipment. And he loved it. And this thing went through the war with him. And it's on the back of this uh, top mount, it's all his battle accolades engraved. And we're probably going to have to take it outside and like we did a couple of other swords and get you a real good shot of it. But this uh, particular sword has been published. It's been photographed and published in a wonderful uh, magazine. And, and if you guys that are collectors, uh, you need to check out North South Trader. And, and Steve Silva, and this guy's a devoted Civil War historian. But it was featured there, and the article was written by the, our good friend Brian Bush, the director at the Battle of Perryville here in Kentucky. But this is another of the, the, the guys you never hear of, 90th Ohio. These guys were tougher than a night in jail, and they fought and fought and fought. And these guys never got the accolades that you hear from other particular infantry groups or battalions or regiments. I love this guy. This is a guy that was in the trenches and making things happen. His men loved him. This is a spectacular sword. And you see this only at the Battle of the Western Theater Museum. Can you move up and get some good shots of, of it in, the, in the, the museum here? Then we'll go outside and see if we can get the natural lighting for the presentations on the back. All right, the old KR has got you a good shot of the the, the main uh, part of the, the sword itself. This, uh, you know, unusual, you know, special order sword. These, these, these weren't off the shelf. And, uh, you know, officers bought this and they had it inscribed by the engraver wherever area they were in. But it's a wonderful sword. All right, well now we're going to try to get, let you guys share this this engraving on the back. It's it's over the top. All right, Kenny, let's move her outside. All right, Kenny's got a shot of the top mount. Hope it don't make you dizzy. And that's the the start of presentation of Colonel Samuel Yeoman from his officers in the 90th. You see the OVI Ohio Volunteer Infantry. And then I'm going to, we're trying to help each other out. we got some lighting that we've moved in to hopefully pick us up. You 
in uh, and there it is and I, and I don't have my glasses on so this again this was for his gallantry it was prevent, presented to him from his men and um, during the Battle of Stones River and this uh, spectacular engraving look at the the real miniature engravings it's unbelievable the jewelers of the day were spectacular to be able to do this all by hand is you know over the top but again another another wonderful sword here in the, the Battle of the Western Theater Museum and uh, with a spectacular presentation again Kenny's waved his magic wand and 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 pulled this uh, beautiful presentation off where you can see it all right we're getting ready to go to the final artifact of this video All right, here's our next great artifact up. And this is an 1860 staff and field sword that you're gonna see that belonged to Colonel John Levering. Now here's a, an obituary of him, and, a, and of course a, a picture of him. And Kenny's got that in there, and, and, and just take a few seconds here and let you read that, then I'll tell you the you know, different positions that he held. Okay, in 1861, he was appointed captain of the Quartermasters of the Indiana Volunteers by President Lincoln himself. He served at Cheat Mountain, Virginia in that campaign. In 62, he was in charge of the post Grawley Bridge in West Virginia. In 1862, he joined the staff of General Polk, Army of the Potomac. Then by the fall of that year, in November, he was appointed Chief Quartermaster of the Army of the Cumberland. And that was on May of 1863. And at that particular time, President Lincoln poised, uh, uh, personally appointed him to the rank of major. He also served in Chattanooga, New Orleans. And then he was shifted to Little Rock, Arkansas. And before uh, President Lincoln got assassinated, he appointed him Colonel and Adjutant General of the Department of Arkansas. Colonel Leverling lived until July 2nd, 1901. Another great veteran, great patriot from the great state of Indiana. All right, Kenny Rogers. I want you guys to, to take a serious look at this. This is an 1860 staff and field. 99% of the 1860 staff and fields are post-war. This is an actual war period sword. So can you get your magic going and let's see what happens. All right, there's a good shot of the, uh, the upper part of the sword. And again, look at the width of that blade. That's a fighting blade that's in there. It's not a dress blade. And this is a spectacular sword in impeccable condition. Now on that uh, scabbard underneath of it, on that top mount, is this presentation. And we're going to get Kenny to uh, pan the blade a little bit, and then we'll get the mount. Then after the war, the old colonel, he used to love to go to the GAR meetings and encampments, and we have his belt and the hangers that he used and wore and carry this sword to those events. But we're gonna get the, the blade of the sword first and then the, the uh, presentation, and then we'll get the final shot on the belt. Okay, Kenny's got a good shot of the, the etching on the blade, which is just absolutely spectacular. So he's gonna run down the blade to the etching end so you can get a good look at it. And plus you can see the, the blade itself. Okay, uh, we got a good shot here of the belt plate. Now this is his Civil War belt plate. And uh, 
it has been silvered and uh, of course most of the silver has gone and and it's a matching belt plate it's uh, the silver number 117 on the the keeper and the, the plate itself and then this course this is this uh, JAR leather belt which is white a buff looking white and the hangers of the JAR period which I'm gonna get Kenny go ahead and back camera up now and you can see what they looked like but this guy loved his sword and and he uh, Worked all the events. There you go. And you notice on the hangers, the beautiful Federal Eagle, which those are also silvered. All right, now the last shot will be the presentation on the, the mount. All right, and there you go. That's his top mount. And there's Major John Levering. Wonderful engraving. And, and again, these are. He's a, you know, one of the unsung heroes of the Western Theater. You know, uh, they say an army moves on on his stomach and and supplies, and and this guy evidently he must have been real good because he he ran the whole state of uh, Indiana, then you know attached to the Army of the Potomac, Army of the Cumberland, and then ended up in Arkansas, which you know very few you know prominent. Uh, guys ended up in Arkansas. It was kind of the last step. But I love it. I love it. It's total Western theater. And love for you to come down and visit with us and see these uh, particular artifacts. And so from uh, Civil War Guru, my master cameraman Kenny Rogers, aka KR, our wonderful board of directors of the Civil War Museum Battles of the Western Theater.